Chris Bertoy is the head coach and manager of football operations with the University of Waterloo Warriors football team. Let's get right into it here, coach. The OUA has been deemed not elite by the Ontario provincial government. What's your response and your reaction to that? Um, obviously disappointment. Um, you know, they deemed us not elite, um, you know, six months ago, a few weeks in advance, a few months in advance of, of our football season, but obviously it's, it's resurrected itself and, um, it's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate for all the student athletes um, that are in their competitive season, whether it be basketball, hockey, volleyball, swimming, you name it. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's a thing that uh, I don't, people haven't done their, in, in power, uh, positions of power, haven't done their due diligence and, and gave the full respect they need to uh, with, with what OU, OUA student athletes are capable of and, and quite, uh, you know, reflecting on it it's proofs in the pudding of what they're, what they've done, you know, 37, I think the number 37 OUA athletes, whether current or former were in the Tokyo Olympics, you know, 90 plus OUA football players competing you know, on active rosters in the CFL and NFL for that matter. You know, you think about uh, just in the sport of football, probably a couple million dollars spent on AFAs, athletic financial awards, which are essentially athletic scholarships um, to deem, um, to deem OUA sport, regardless of sport, not elite. Um, quite frankly, it's just disrespectful to the student athletes and all the effort and time and energy that they put towards their uh, individual crafts and, and uh, on top of being uh, successful students. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, it, it's infuriating at times. I'm certainly not going to get angry on this uh, Zoom call interview, but uh, you know, I think they just need to do the right thing and, and get these uh, these young uh, student athletes back to uh, to their respective sports and, and back to competing and training and and just everything that is positive about that um, and just the uh, social interaction piece too. Uh, it's just uh, you know, it's just disappointing, really. That's all. If you could speak directly to members of the provincial government, perhaps the minister of sport, for example, what would you say? I give your head a shake, truthfully. Um, what criteria do you base um, getting designated elite on? Because if you look at some of the sports that are designated elite versus some of the sports and leagues that aren't, it just doesn't make sense. And uh, certainly common sense has uh, taken it on the chin a few times during this pandemic. And then this is just another instance. For your players, you know, you're the manager of football operations for 55 or 60 players. I think mental health is something that you and I need to discuss, especially amongst young athletes right now. They're not able to go to the gym. Like you say, they're not able to train. Um, give me a sense of the mood of your football team and your players right now. I know you're not in season, but football really, OUA football has become a 12 month sport. Yeah, our guys right now, we would have hit the ground running at the start of January after after the Christmas break. And uh, we'd be fully engulfed in, in training seven to eight times a week, whether it's strength and conditioning or practices or individual periods or even just film study. Um, whatever it is we were going to do from our plan, which we had a good one in person. Um, you know, we're trying to do our best right now with some virtual strength and conditioning sessions each day. And, and thank our team has, has shown some great accountability and, and want to just be together and train virtually with their cameras, uh, whether their phones or their, their laptops on and, and seeing each other each day, which has been beneficial. I know for me to see the guys, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, it certainly has a mental strain and, and, uh, you know, getting out and exerting yourself physically has proven has been proven to to be, do good things for for your your mental health. Um, you know, I really you know we we were able to have a season, fortunate enough to have a full season. Uh, my heart is uh, wrenched for all of the student athletes, at, in specific at the University of Waterloo, that uh, were in mid middle of their seasons. Um, I feel for them, not that I don't feel for our guys, but I, uh, you know, our guy, you know, something we discussed is our guys, you know, we need to be thankful for, for our blessings to have a full season. Um, and if you're ever feeling sorry for yourself, just think about your other, um, the other athletes in our, our department uh, that are in, you know, whether it be hockey or basketball or swimming or volleyball or whatever, whatever sport it is, uh, track and field um, that, that aren't able to compete right now. 
um, you throw that on top of it, um, it certainly can be stressful and strenuous. Let's turn it a little bit more positive and let's talk about Trey and Tyrell Ford because those rankings coming out in the last week or so, um, they are both now in the top 10 when it comes to the CFL draft. And obviously you're really proud of those guys and, and you know, all their accomplishments at the University of Waterloo. There is a laundry list of things that those two guys did to, you know, build your program and help your program. And I know that you're really excited to see where they might end up when it comes to CFL draft time. Um, what would you like, we, we've seen them on the field coach. We know what they're all about, you know, but who are they as people? Who are they the kind of guys, if you're speaking to a scout and I'm sure you do, and you talk to different people, uh, what would you like them to know about those two young men? Oh, you know, that they've perse persevered through some, some tough times, uh, you know, growing up, they, uh, they had, a, you know, their father, Bobby's a great man and mentor to them. And, um, you know, but they've pushed through and I think they've always had their backs against the wall. They've always been told they're too small or, you know, they're not playing against good enough competition. You know, there's just a, a litany of, of negativity sometimes thrown towards them. Um, and they've always been able to push through and persevere and, and come out as being, you know, you know, the top two guys, uh, they're, they're elite athletes, uh, but more importantly, elite people. Um, they both have great personalities, great smiles. Um, and at the same time, even though they're twins and six minutes apart, and Tyrell's big brother to Trey, um, they both have their own uh, personalities too. And, and uh, I think the, you know, the biggest thing is that they want to be successful. Um, they've proven that they can be successful, not just on the field, but in the classroom as University of Waterloo students. And they're on time to graduate this spring, which I'm very, very proud of them for. And, and uh, you know, I think the big thing is that, you know, they've quietly become leaders too and, and stepped outside of their comfort zone, never natural raw, raw leaders, but uh, led by example on the field and their efforts, uh, whether it be in the weight room, so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, they're just really, really good, good kids. Uh, they're certainly confident, but um you know, they're not cocky. They, they have a funny way about their confidence and it's disarming um, if, if that's a way to put it. But uh, yeah, great individuals. And, and certainly um, I, uh, I'm happy to advocate for both uh, Tyrell and Trey um, on their journey. And, and they know the work they got to put in um, over the next three months before draft day happens. And, and certainly, uh, you know, opportunities are going to present themselves and, and uh, they need to maximize uh, and seize those opportunities. And, and I fully expect they will. And, and I think uh, um, success is imminent for both of them. You mentioned the word elite there. And maybe that's what's so confusing for a lot of people, right? You're talking about two young men who do the right things in the classroom, who do the right things in the gym, and they will be drafted in the CFL draft, both of them. Is that what makes the messaging perhaps just a little bit confusing for you know the OUA and people like yourself when you just described two exceptional athletes that are going to go pro come the CFL draft yeah yeah I think you you hit the nail on the head uh it, it I think by saying that it just kind of makes me a little bit more infuriated by what's happening but I know I'm not you know we're not going to go down that rabbit hole we're going to as you said keep it on the positive now but uh yeah you know they epitomize that the, the standard of elite and uh Right. They optimize that for our football program, but uh, also our athletic department and for um, all of their OUA peers. And, and they're not exclusive in that. There's so many outstanding athletes at our university and across the OUA um, that opportunities are being hindered um, by just not doing your research, not understanding what level of amateur sport we're at. Now, this is the largest organization of amateur sport in the province. And uh, yeah, as I said, disrespectful. We're talking about 9,500 OUA athletes, just so that there's a number out there so that everybody knows, you know, 9,500 athletes across the province who currently can't train because of, you know, what's obviously going on in the, in the climate around us. So let's talk about some of the new recruits quickly. Um, you know, January is always kind of uh, recruiting season. You know, there's a blackout obviously over the holidays. Um, Nick Orr, a kid that, you know, comes from uh, Mayfield uh, High School, played football in Caledon, uh, big quarterback, six foot three, 210 pounds. Um, you're excited about Nick and, and just how excited are you to be adding new young, fresh faces who are obviously excited to be part of the Warriors football program? Yeah, it was uh, Nick's a great addition. Um, he obviously has, has the skills and, and traits to be an outstanding quarterback. Uh, you know, he's going to, you know, we have a, a few uh, very, very competitive quarterbacks on our roster. And Nick's going to come in and compete with those guys. And obviously with Trey moving forward, 
the quarterback is the CEO of the, of the football squad. So um, there's pressure to play quarterback. And, and um, I certainly think that Nick's going to come in and, and compete his tail off and, and work to be that guy. Uh, but he knows that he has to work for it. Uh, yeah. It's recruiting season. That's for sure. And, and we're sitting, you know, things are going well um, so far. So good. Uh, we're sitting at about 14 committed recruits. Uh, we're in the thick of it. Obviously this shutdown, um, it was nice to get back to doing in-person visits and, and having uh, recruits on campus and, and getting back to that. And now we're kind of flipped the switch and we're back to the virtual world. And I'm just about to go on another, uh, another virtual presentation right now um, with a big old lineman. And, and yeah, no, it's exciting. Obviously, uh, you know, we're in a transition phase as a football program. Um, we're reloading. I know, uh, five, seven years ago, we talked about rebuilding. We're now reloading. Uh, we got a great core group of, of football players currently on our roster in their first, second, third, and fourth year. Um, there's a, there's a, a new fire and a new energy with this team understanding, um, that we're going to have to replace a lot of, of very, very good football players, whether it be Trey Tyrell, Gordon Lamb, um, Spencer Andrews, you name it. Uh, lots of guys are, are moving on, uh, you know, our offensive line guys and Greg Brand and the Curtis twins and Brandon Metz, you name it. There's a lot of guys moving forward and, and their next steps of, of their life journey. And, and, um, and it's just uh, one of those things that, uh, you know, part of a football football program's journey is, is to reload and, and, and take our next steps. And, and certainly those guys were indebted to those guys for um, coming here and doing all the hard work they did to get us to a good place, uh, three straight playoff appearances. Um, but, and they, they've set the standard and, and that is our bottom line standard is to be a playoff team and, and continue to build and move forward and, and ultimately achieve what, uh, what this group that came and started this uh, wasn't able to achieve. And that's still win a Yates cup and, and beyond. Appreciate the time, Coach. Thanks for being candid and honest with the OUA's elite stuff. I think you send a good message, um, you know, for not only your team, but, you know, other teams, whether it be at Waterloo, Laurier, Guelph, or across the OUA. Um, you know, your honesty certainly appreciate it. And I want to see you in person soon. Hopefully we can do that. Take care. And we'll chat soon, Coach. Thanks, Darren. Always happy to advocate for our student athletes. Always will. For more highlights, visit our website, 519sportsonline.ca. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.